Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Dracalia Lost video. I'm basically back to full capacity now. Um, my arm still is a little sore, but other than that, I feel perfectly fine. I do have an extreme ear pain, but I don't think that's from the vaccine itself. So let's get back to things as normal, and today's things as normal is... So I wanted to talk about the Fire Emblem banner that's coming back on... Um, 516, which should be, depending on when you see this video, right when day roll hits, uh, when the current gala banner ends, this is when they come up. I want to talk about the Fire Emblem characters, whether if you're someone who's new to Dragalia and weren't there for Fire Emblem, if you kind of want to know how they are, I'll kind of do a rundown of them, kind of give my thoughts on them. Uh, there's six of them, so I'll give a very brief, like, I'm not going to do the basic, like, full breakdown because we would be here forever i'll just give you kind of an idea of how they are so that's gonna be today's video i hope you like it if you do you can leave a like comment subscribe do all those good things for me it helps my channel so if you want to help a brother out you can do that so let's go into it um and also thank you to everyone who's wishing me uh get 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 better soon i appreciate it a whole bunch all right now for real so this is a very interesting banner um, because it, literally every single character is on it. Marf, Fjorm, Veronica, Krom, Peony, Tiki. Uh, that is six units. <laughs> I think the, the max I've ever seen featured is... I think it's usually like... Um, four is the most I've ever seen, I think. Not in and this is not including a dragon, because there are no dragons. Tiki is a dragon, but she's not a dragon in the classification of Dragalia. So, yeah, this is super interesting that they did it this way. I was totally expecting one banner with Marf, um, Krom, not Marf Krom, uh, Marf, Fjorm, and Veronica, and then the next Krom, Peony, Tiki, not making two banners for part two. Um, so this is very interesting. This is a very interesting way of doing it. If you don't have any of the Fire Emblem characters, I think this is actually a better way for you to kind of get a Fire Emblem character if you're interested, because uh, six of them are featured, which is kind of insane. <laughs> um, but if you're someone who's like is specifically is like, I just want Tiki, you're gonna be in for a very bad time because every time you pull Fjorm, Marf, Veronica, Krom, Peony, all you can think of is. You could have been Tiki, but you couldn't because you shared Tiki is sharing featured with five other units. So, so that's something to keep in mind for sure. Um, so yeah, we have first up here. Of, out of these units, these are all extremely good units, by the way. Marf. The only problem that Marf has is that he's fire, and fire has a lot of crazy good units in it. Um, which, by the way, Marf is one of them. Marf probably doesn't get as much play nowadays, probably because of Nihility in some cases, but also because there's less cheesing going on. Um, yeah, less cheesing. Let me take that back. I don't see as much cheesing, so I don't see Marf as often, but his specific kit is just insane. He also has a Mana Spiral, which is the old style, not the current style, so you can just get it immediately. Um, which you'll want to you'll want to do because this part of here in his ability, which is fill 100% of the entire team's skill gauge when the user HP drops 30%, um, with the mana spiral it becomes better, and this can be happen this can happen twice, uh, not in between I think 15 seconds of each other. Um, so he ends up being extremely good for that ability alone. There's a lot of ways you can kind of cheese that ability if you're playing him normal. There's a lot of ways you can just play him good. Um, the only thing that he suffers from is that just Fire is an extremely crazy class with a bunch of really strong and good units. Um, that's his only, like, slight. But if you want to use Marf, you can use Marf. That's how I feel. Fjorm is um, Water Lance. I don't use her very often. I have her Mana Spiraled fully out, and she is extremely good. Uh, there's, I was going to say, to my mind, there is not a... Uh, Sinister Dominion, but that's a lie. Uh, water is in the part two of that fight, I believe. Light and water, but um, I can't remember. I don't actually know if she's used in that, but either way. I know for a fact in some of the uh, other fights with uh, that use water, Fjorm is used, and Fjorm is very good there. Her info is in here, so you're just going to have to take my word that she's very good. She's not pictured from the first three, um, but she's still extremely good. And she has a Mana Spiral, which is why she's extremely good. <laughs> 
Veronica. Uh, Veronica is also extremely good. She's a shadow unit. She's one of the top DPS shadow units, at least um, before Nihility. I don't know how it is post Nihility. I haven't had a lot of interactions with shadow and Nihility. Nihility is just such a weird thing to, to keep in mind that that's why I'm a little bit like, eh, I don't know how she does there. But I do know is that everything else, she's just extremely strong. She has kind of a berserker mentality to it, where the lower her HP is, the stronger her attacks get, but also, oh no, wait, the one I have used is in Thor's fight for Shadow, and she was great in that. I used her in that, and she did perfectly fine. Um, she did, still did a bunch of damage and was able to kind of stay away from, uh, from Thor and deal plenty of damage. Uh, similar to the other three, she has a mass barrel that makes her good, so even looking at this info, I want to say at launch she was absolutely the best out of the three Fire Emblem characters, and I want to say of part one she is still the best of them post mana spiral. Um, so yeah, she's definitely worth getting. Now let's talk about the black sheep of the Fire Emblem heroes, Krom. Krom is effectively the weakest. And the reason is, is that his entire kit is built around powering himself up to do one big old meteor attack, which is fine, except for now Nihility exists. So Nihility, what it does is that unless it's a very personal buff, it removes all buffs from the user. Um, for some reason, Krom's buffs aren't considered individual buffs because it doesn't, I guess, come from a special name. I don't know why. But Krom basically loses all his stacks, so you can't actually build stacks with Krom under Nihility, which makes Krom basically kind of useless. <laughs> Even in um, stuff without Nihility, Krom is very much a one-trick, kind of like, he does a lot of big fire damage, but fire already does so much damage that you don't really see much. Krom's <laughs> Krom having to jump so much hoops to do one big attack doesn't matter when so many other fire units can do it so effortlessly. I think when he gets a mana spiral that hopefully kind of addresses some of his issues, like him being basically useless under Nihility, and him also having basically no damage except for when he hits with the big attack, he'll be fixed a little bit. Because I really do like Krom as a character, and I was actually really bummed out how they did Krom in this one. They just did not do him any justice, I feel. But hey, it's how it goes. But really, one out of five, five out of six ain't bad. Next, we got Peony. Peony is a, a light wand unit. She is used basically in almost every single light team that I can think of. I've used her a whole bunch. I've used her so much that I don't even remember what she does because she just hangs out in the background. She does provide a buff to light units. I don't think she's on here. Of course she's not. Maybe she's on the other one. Peony actually doesn't have a mana spiral, so... Let's see. Maybe she's under the platinum. She's totally under the platinum, I bet. So we can take a look. So here we go. Yeah, she gives light damage up 20%, which is amazing, and light defense 6%, and in general she gives a whole bunch of like attack rate up um, buffs, strength buffs, defense buffs, kind of built into it. She's a paralyzed punisher as well, she's a very good support and also damage dealer, she's a support unit. Not damage dealer, I guess I consider damage dealing in terms of she helps others deal damage, but whatever. Um, extremely good if you can get her. Tiki. The uh, Water Dagger. She is... I love this unit so much. I think at her launch, I really loved her. And then post-launch, I felt like, oh, she's like this weird hybrid of um, dragon and adventurer. And she doesn't really serve... She's not really as good as I would have hoped. That was after she released. Um... And then, a little bit later on, they introduced, I want to say it was like not that long afterwards, they introduced this mechanic where, uh, because back in the day, Jugalia, you and the AI took the same amount of damage, but now only the main character in solo play that you are using takes damage. Um, and the rest kind of take reduced damage from that. So what it's done is made Tiki basically a tank god. She can almost never die when she, you, she is not the controlled character character and to be fair she also couldn't she was very hard to kill in a regular dragon form but under the ai's control her dragon form just becomes insane she's so insane she makes the 
light boss so much easier, Tartarus, um, because she's able to kind of ignore his entire mechanic and just keep on going off in the background in her dragon form, which is amazing. So I actually think Tiki's probably... I want to I want to call her maybe in my heart she's the top unit if I'm looking at pure statistics I would probably say Veronica is number one followed by Marth no followed by Peony then Marth um would I really put no I would put Tiki over Fjorm Fjorm and then Krom dead, dead last that's the way it goes um but she has like a lot of fun utility. I really like the way they built her. She has standard attack damage, which really helps for units that are... At the time, it doesn't give a, a lot of boost to a lot of people, but it is a big boost to characters who specifically get all their damage from like DPSing with the, the, with the main attack. Um, which can be very helpful, of course. Uh, so she's just got a lot of utility that you can actually kind of use. She has Dragon Haste 20%. Um, she has built-in Frostbite Punisher, Burn Resistance, uh, Dragon Form, extremely good. If you get her, um, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of people going specifically just for Tiki because of how useful Tiki can be, not only on a water team, but just it kind of in general to have. I think she's probably one of the new breed that I would say, um, uh, these, this new breed of units that I would say, like, there's specific units in the game where I'm like, you're the reason why we got locked down out of <laughs> elements. But if there was a second tier, I would say Tiki's right on that second tier. She's just extremely useful for, um, for Tartarus. So much so. Tartarus is such a bad fight that you have to give her props for making the fight slightly easier. Um, at least that's how I feel about it. So yeah, that's kind of a quick overview of all six of the units. Is this banner worth summoning on? I would say yeah. These guys are limited and we have no idea when they'll ever return. Um, for that same notion, there's a platinum summoning, summoning, platinum summon, um, where you can summon for them if you use the, the diamond currency, which does require you to use real life money. This banner is, if you're going to summon on it, I would, and you have no Fire Emblem Hero character, this is basically a fantastic uh, unit uh, banner to summon on, because I want to say it's only these six units that are on the banner. You're guaranteed one of them. It's possible for you to totally... If you're insanely lucky, you could get all of them, for all I know. But... Um, but... Where was my butt coming from? Don't take that out of context. Uh, but the one thing that's kind of bad about it is that if you do have a um, already one of the Fire Emblem characters, this Platinum Summon becomes way worse. Like, for example, I watched my good buddy D Free back in the day, way back in the day when he summoned on uh, Fire Emblem Heroes when it first came out. He did his regular summons for first, got Marth from the banner, and then when he did his Platinum Summon, he got Marth. So it kind of, and that was back when it was a one out of three chance, and currently you're in a one out of six chance, so you, it's not as bad. But if you have two units, that's a two out of six chance. If you're someone who, if you have, if you have Marth and you're looking for Krom, that's the worst scenario because both of them are flame swords. So you, anytime you see a rainbow sword, it could be either Marth or Krom. At least you know that if you get, if you see a lance or a, well, no, actually it's the same for one. You could get Veronica or Peony. Yeah, this is gonna be kind of rough to summon on. If I'm being honest, I don't. I wish everyone the best of luck on these banners. Uh, this this banner is worth summoning on. The thing that I super dislike about banners that have more than four characters is when they share classes. So, for example, if you want to get both Marf and Krom, you're gonna constantly want to get Rainbow Swords. But once the Rainbow Sword shows up, you got basically a 50/50 chance of getting either Marth or Krom, and Based off of my constant gotcha playing, you're more likely to get the dupe because that's just how life works out, unfortunately. Uh, so if you want to get Veronica and you already have Peony, well, congratulations because you're gonna have to go back and keep wanting for wand and hoping to God that you do not get the you get the right unit instead of the wrong one. At least Tiki and um, Fjorm don't share the same um, weapon. So yeah, that's the end of today's video, man. I hope you liked it. Um, I wish you guys good luck if you're summoning. I already have all six of these units, so I'm not summoning. Um, but I did want to give my thoughts on it. I do think Fire Emblem uh, Heroes is worth summoning on. Especially because they're limited. Especially if you're a big fan of Fire Emblem. These characters are good. 
and there's nothing better than having a collab character of characters you like be good. Because that's really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter meta, it doesn't matter anything else. What matters is, do you love playing with these units? And 100%, as a fan of Fire Emblem, I love having these units and playing with them when I have the chance. So, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did, do all the stuff I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Peace out, and God is my hero.